Hi all, it's Kelly with the Appalachian Booksmith and I am on here for part three. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to paint this cover and then I'm gonna try to paint a little bit inside of here. Um, now, I've said that I'm making a series of sewing theme journals. I'm actually making four. And I don't just make the cover and then after the cover's done, like, wing it. So because the cover has drying time, it takes me a little more time. When I come up with these ideas, I immediately start thinking about pages, layouts, embellishments. So I just want to come on and show you really quick. I do things like I've gone through paper and found anything that has like buttons or sewing theme of any sort. And I have collected those. I have been collecting older things like this is an old lace seam binding or this is a black stretchy seam binding or this lace I've been collecting these older items that can be put into tucky spots into like the um, ideas journal and things like that the other thing that I've done is I made templates for these bobbins and I did end up actually as a side thing, I end up putting all of my own laces on these, but I made a template that would go inside like a signature. And then I made just a template of like a little spool to hold laces. Another thing I've been doing is collecting old wooden spools that I can use to dangle. I've also purchased these guys and they are a lot of people make I think dolls out of these but they are laundry I don't know if these are clips or what they'd be called and the reason I'm doing that is because I received this in some happy mail or actually a rack a rack of act of random act of kindness and I thought this was so incredibly clever to wrap the lace around this so the journal I'm working on now I'm gonna have three of these dangling from the spine and I'm really excited about it. So I just gotta distress them. And when I make these and distress them, I'll make a video for it. Another thing I've been doing preparing for these videos is I went ahead and made some master board collages with sewing stuff. So we have sewing paper, we have instructions, Again, instructions, and I did add some other papers other than just the sewing papers and instructions. I added some colors that I think kind of went good with that kind of stuff. And here's the, from a cover of a pattern. But you can see I've already made, and what I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sewing themed master boards knowing I'm going to be making four journals that have a, some kind of sewing theme in them. And I, mean, I may not have a use for this on some of them. Um, this might even be cute for cutting out for those um, spools. There's a lot of things I can do with this. So this is another thing I've been preparing, knowing that I'm making these. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you before we get started painting is this. So I decided, since I'm doing sewing themes... I went ahead and bought some embroidery patterns and I am, and I'm not good at embroidery at all. I mean, this is, I'm following the instructions on the pack. Even for a quilter, embroidery was never really my thing. I mean, this looks probably most hideous, but it's okay. Um, so I'm embroidering these knowing that I can cut this out and put it on a paper as an embellishment. I can put it on an envelope. I can put it on a tag or something like that. And I use this heavy, like a thicker, it's like a, it's a loosely woven, but a thicker thread of linen. So what will happen if I cut this out, I can easily pull the little pieces out and get fraying all around it. I thought that'd be kind of pretty. And um, this was, normally I buy the Aunt Martha's, but this is a Stitcher's Revolution. And you can see um, I'm going to be using several of these. And I didn't use all of it. Like, I'm going to be using the stork scissors. I'm going to be using the thread, which I think I just showed you. 
Um, I'm probably going to do the measuring tape, but just different things from here. Some of the stuff is just too big, but I'm going to be then embroidering these and adding these into my journal. And they're so easy and they're reusable. Once you iron these on fabric once, you can iron them a couple times after that. So just something, just thinking of things that will go along with the sewing theme. I've even purchased some sewing um, different embellishments or beads. Here we go. So I purchased these and I have a little spool. This is cute, a little dress form. Um, thimble, little sewing machine, measuring tape, scissors, all kinds of little things that can be added to these journals. So when, I, when I'm coming up with an idea and I'm designing journals, I'm constantly on the lookout for things that I can use in those journals. Um, I've also been collecting old patterns. Any thrift shop I go to that has McCall or any of those patterns that are vintage, like from my favorite are like the 50s, the 70s, I'm purchasing those, so I have them. So when I'm designing, coming up with ideas, even as I'm making this, or even, if, even when I first came up with the idea of doing the sewing ones, I started immediately looking for stuff. I also go on to YouTube and I watch as many videos as I can of people that do anything with a sewing theme and a journal or a book. It's kind of where I start. And I try to give everybody credit where credit is, you know, because I don't want to take credit from anyone at all. Um, that's not what I'm about. So um, the other, like I, I'm really loving the needle books, but they're all too tiny. And today when I was looking up needle books, I found someone who made one like two to three times the size of what people normally make. And she did a, she did the kind of the quilt as you go cover for it. It was so cool. And I'm going to use some of her ideas. So when I make that needle book, I'm going to be giving her credit and linking you to her video. So just kind of more of that whole process. What's going on in my brain as I come up with these ideas and I'm thinking about what I might do. Okay, so I really still have not 100% sure how I want to go with this. And I know that I think I think the, a brown or background is going to be good. I almost wanted light and not, you know, but I need a medium brown because I'm going to have to have some contrast. So I think I'm going to do the whole thing in a medium brown. And then I'm going to come through with a darker brown. And I'm going to do a little bit of shading on the right sides and the bottoms of everything just to give it a little more texture and depth. And then I'm just gonna go from there. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going from that point. I did decide instead of just using white to use acrylic um, gesso with the brown paint. I haven't even dug out the brown paint. Hopefully I have a brown paint that's not dried up. My luck, if it's all dried up, we might be stopping this video long <laughs> enough for me to, to figure that out. But I have, um, this is matte acrylic paint, quick drying, easy um, brown oxide. And I'm going to tell you why I would be willing to say that this paint is older than my children. And I have a 30 year old, so that's not, I'm sure I'm exaggerating, but I'd say, oh, and it's not coming out of there. It's like, nope, not happening. Let me think. Let me think, 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 think. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to do what I do with a ketchup bottle. I'm going to stand up and spin my arm round and round and round and try to get it to the end. If that doesn't work, I'm just going to swash a little bit of water in here. Um, I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, plan B, <laughs> because none of that worked. <laughs> Thank goodness I'm an art person and I have lots of art supplies. So what I have here is um, just some acrylic art colors. I have light brown and I have um, just plain brown. I'm gonna start with that just plain brown. I'm gonna move this book because knowing me, I am going to make a terrible disaster. That's, well, that's kind of how I function. If it's not a mess, it's usually not anything to do with me because when I'm doing it, it's usually a mess. And I'm probably making a huge mistake putting every drop of that brown in there, but you know. It is what it is. And then I'm going to squirt in some of this gesso. And this is just simply acrylic, funny, simply acrylic gesso. So um, funny, it's the same brand as my acrylic paints. 
I don't actually know where I got these. I would say they're not as old as some, as some of my other supplies. So I'm just gonna dump that gesso in there. That sounded absolutely not lovely. I'm gonna very unprofessionally use the end of my paintbrush to mix this up. Let's see what we get. Right now it's way too light, so I might have messed up. And if I did, typical me. That's what I do. I mess up things. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is coming out entirely lighter than I wanted it. I'll stick that in there. I think that if I paint that book this light, I'm going to have trouble with things showing up. So I need it to be darker. So in comes light brown, who's a little darker than this. I put way too much gesso in there. Who knows what crazy color I'm going to end up with, but cool thing is I'm not totally wasting it because I ha can put a lid on this and use it another time. Let me, oh gosh, I'm so messy. I always tell my students in the science lab, sometimes Mrs. Myers is really bad about the rules. Do what I tell you, don't do what I do because sometimes what I do is not the bestest. I kind of like this because I was wanting to do some pinks and mauves. The light is really bad in here, so I don't think that's going to show up really great. Let me get that off there. And let me paint the paper. I think this is, yeah, I would say that's going to work out good. Because it, I think I wanted more of a brown, but knowing that my intentions were to do some pink highlighting with this, I think this is going to work. The biggest thing is hopefully I can squeeze enough brown out of there to do the highlighting I wanted to do. So here goes nothing. And it is snowing here again. Absolutely. Day number two, pouring snow down. I'm sure there's a lot of kids out there going, ooh, this is awesome. But, you know. Okay, so I'm basically just going to paint this on. And um, no rhyme reason, just painting it on. And it doesn't matter if the streaks and strokes go in different ways. It's not going to affect this in any way. Um, the biggest thing with this, oh, and I do like this color. This is turning out really nice. The lighting is so bad because it's kind of overcast because it starts snowing again. But I think this is exactly what I'm looking for, even though it's a bit of a weird brown. I, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I know. And I'm not just saying that because <laughs> I think I totally messed up. I really am pleased with it. So that's what I'm going with. I'm going to keep painting. If I didn't like it, I was <laughs> going to convince my husband in the snow to go to Walmart. No, I wasn't. He, I wouldn't have him um, driving in the snow. I don't know if this will show up, but I do want to show you that, that that little bit of thread in there is the texture of it is coming through and hopefully you can see the textures of the texture of those dots coming through as well and i'm gonna move this this way to make sure you can see yeah very good so i probably should have done this earlier today but i had to wait for it to dry and what i've noticed with painting these is it usually takes a little doing and manipulating and I, places like this with these little details, I gotta put the paint in too thick. So sometimes I'll just let it go in there too thick and then take the excess paint somewhere else and then keep pulling it out. You know, I don't want the paint too thick, but I mean, I ha I really do, with this technique, I need full coverage. It needs to completely be painted for this to work the way I want it to work. So what I'm going to do because I think watching me slowly paint this and listening to me ramble is going to be pretty exhausting. Um, actually, before I, I'm gonna speed this up, but before I do that, let me go grab some Cheetos. Now, there's gonna be some, some places while you're doing this that you're not gonna be able to get your paint in. So you need to get some tiny ones like this where you can get in here and just, I call it stirring because it's basically what you're going to do. You're going to get your, your 
your paintbrush in there and you're simply going to stir it in there to make sure you're getting all of the places inside there. You don't want any of the base, the color of any of the elements coming through. You want everything to be this color. And I'm actually falling in love with this brown. It's funny how that works, but so I'm going to turn this off and then start recording again so that I can speed it up. So A, I'm not rambling and boring you to death. And there's, I don't know. I For some reason, when I get to see the sped up like painting on people's um, videos and maybe sped up doing different things like this, repetitive things, I really enjoy it. Maybe I'm a weirdo. I don't know, but it just, it's one of those, what are they, what are those videos? The weirdly satisfying ones. It kind of is weirdly satisfying for me. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off, restart the recording and speed it up. So I'll be back in a second.
Okay, I'm back. This is dried. I really like it. I don't like the angle though. I'm trying to work on this and I'm having trouble seeing, keeping it to where it works out for the tablet. So what I have so far, oh, I've got some really light pink. I've got white. I have red. I know I, I want a pink effect. I grabbed these and these are um, metallic rub-ons. And I didn't really want metallic. And it doesn't really have a pink anyway. Um, I have these, these say they're metallic. And they've got kind of a cream. I might use that. And these are more lusters. And there isn't a, there's more of a white. There's a gray. But there's not really what I'm looking for. So I thought, let's just make a mess. The cool thing about this is if I mess this entire thing up, I can just start over. I can paint it black again. So I'm not gonna stress. So I'm gonna take finger tool and I guess I'll just plop that in there. Maybe I'll just rub it here. And I'm just going to kind of see what happens when I go over this. And oh, I don't know. It does have a pink kind of color to it, but it's almost too light of a pink. So I think when I go over this with the white, or the cream or the beige to bring out some stuff, it's not gonna work out so great. So I'm going to yeah, stick my book right in that paint, of course, or we'll just keep it this way. It's not gonna hurt it to be like that. And I'm going to take a handy, handy paintbrush and take just a little bit of the red and a little bit of the pink. And this might be but yeah, that's too red. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that really is what I'm looking for. But maybe instead of with my finger, maybe do a little painting. I don't know. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to mess it up. But if I do, it's not the end of the world because I can simply paint over it in brown and start again. So let's see. Let me look at it. Oh, I don't know. It kind of looks like puke. Pepto-Bismol puke. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should give it a chance somewhere else. Not sure. Maybe like as some accents. I kind of like it there. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to go for it for now. If I end up hating it, I probably should stop. Anytime I don't feel good about something, I should just stop. But, you know. It's, it's, it's very pink. Okay. I don't know how well you can see because the light is most terrible here. Let's put it here. It is terrible here. Um, I kind of like it in a pukey Pepto Bismol kind of way. But if I want to continue with this, I'm definitely going to have to make more than what's there. So let me destroy another paintbrush here. I think I'm just going to take the pink that's there and add the red to it. If this ends up absolutely most terrible, then I apologize. Yeah, no, it is what it is. You lose some, you win some, I don't know. Um, the girl from Lindy Sprays, and I don't like, I don't, I'm nervous about spraying on it. She put a base color and then she just started painting colors and all this beautiful blending started occurring and I'm not really sure that I'm capable of that. I mean, I should have more faith in myself maybe, I don't know. But basically, I'm just kind of giving it, let me look. I think I like it. I do. And I think I'm gonna, I lightened it up a little bit and I, I definitely like it better lightened up like this. I'm just looking like to fringe over it just a little bit. I don't know. I might be crying in a little bit like, oh, I hate it. You just never know with me, but and it's hard to see. The lighting is just awful right now. It is very hard to see. The best place to see it is right here. And I'm liking it. 
I really am. I don't sound convincing, but I am liking it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go over the whole thing with the pink. And I'm going to do like I did before and just maybe speed through it. And then come back and do the next part. So I will see you in a second.
Okay, I'm back. This is pretty much the end of um, part, was this part two? <laughs> uh, the painting. Um, I'm in love with this. And, you know, I always tell my students, if you like it and you did it, be proud. And I, I do like this. It's pretty cool. Now, the last video, I don't even know what happened that I sped up. But I used this luster, the white. And then when I was doing this stuff on the outside here, I used acrylic white paint with a little bit of water occasionally to blend that in. And then I did the same thing in the inside. I'm not sure how much of that showed up on video. So my next video, which I think is part three, I am going to be putting on the same plate. And I'm going to be putting a piece of a cutter quilt or a piece of 100% cotton batting behind that. And I think and a piece of fabric that's got... Um, brown pink and teal in it and then I think I might do something back here a small piece here with a little sentiment on it and then I might do a little bit of fabric here and then I'm going to put an eyelet here and I might even make the um, little danglies that are going to go with it so I'm basically going to be finishing up those things doing the end papers and putting fabric in the spine on the inside so that will be part three and absolutely not kidding and maybe that's conceited of me maybe it's not maybe you know if you work hard but um not sure how well this is showing up it's just I've tried artificial light it's not working so great but I am 100% pleased with this I hope I inspired you I hope you enjoyed this um please come back for part three and please subscribe